morning everyone I've got a quick video today showing how I made the little folios that I put my tags in and a little pocket that I put the acetate tags in and these as you know um, if you've been watching my channel went into my creation boxes um, and I've also got one or two little variations on these so that you can see how versatile they can be in your journals. I also thought I'd include um, this little one in um, the tutorial today. This is just a very, very simple um, origami um, folded envelope. And I put these in my boxes as well just to um, include my business card as you can see and also when they're opened up I left a little message inside um, thanking people for buying my boxes but these are really really simple just a couple of folds and they go really well in journals um, as journaling spots as well as little tiny envelopes so let's get to it um, the first thing I thought I'd show today is what really is more um, complicated and that is this little folio now if I open it up you can see that um, I've used a couple of eyelets on the front that I've threaded my sari silk through you don't have to um, put eyelets in I'll show you another option for closing up your folio um, but they are very very simple and just made out of a sheet of A4 paper or as I've done here vellum um, what you could use as well is um, a page of a digital kit that you've printed out um, I chose vellum purely because I love the challenge of working in vellum um, but also because um, I just wanted mine to be very very plain and simple so as you can see there's a pocket at the bottom there's a tuck spot on one side there and a little tuck spot on the other side there if you want to use them you can sew these if you want to but um, with these being vellum and I wanted a very simple look I didn't choose to stitch mine so let's get started so what you'll need first off is whatever your um, folio is going to be made out of. So I've got here a sheet of, it says it's parchment paper. Um, this is what it is, um, parchment paper, 155 GSM. But actually, it's a really good weight vellum. Um, they just, this particular company, paper papertent.com, uh, just call it parchment paper. Um, I would suggest um, if you're going to use parchment or vellum not to use anything less than 155 GSM really because it would make your pocket too flimsy um, and I wouldn't go up to 200 GSM because that tends to crack if you're not careful when you're scoring it so I tend to find if you're working in vellum 155 GSM is perfect if you are going to be doing it in paper or cardstock absolutely fine go for your life um, if you want to include it in your journals then slightly thinner paper um, round about um, 80 GSM up to 100 GSM would be fine for making these they're not going to be too bulky for inside your journals and you could use it as a kind of um, gatefold inclusion so doing it in paper would be absolutely fine or even book pages if you're going to use it for happy mail then you might want to consider around about 160 GSM cardstock so just some tips there um, you can also make these any size that you want now I made mine size specific because I wanted them for these tags that um, I had made so they are eight centimeters across in width and 16 centimeters high and in old money that equates to three and a quarter by um, six and a half so I wanted to make sure that mine were, were going to fit these tags so with these being eight centimeters across I knew that I wanted to fit them in a pocket 
at the bottom and therefore that pocket needed to have a little bit of wiggle room as well as room for me to do my gluing. So I made the width of my um, little folios nine centimeters across. So if you're going to work to the same size, what I did first off was to use my uh, ruler or my mat and I measured out 27 um, centimeters um, across and I made a mark and then just chopped it. So I've already pre-done um, that on here, this piece of vellum, just to save time. And I'm going to use my guillotine, my Friskers guillotine, just to snip off that bit that I'm not going to use. Now, if you prefer to use a ruler and um, a craft knife, a sharp craft knife, then go for your life. My preference always seems to be to go to the guillotine, but I will be using this later on. Don't get rid of this bit because this is what I would use if you didn't want to do your closure with a couple of eyelets. You could always use this to wrap it around. Let me just do that. Fold it and fold it on that side. Put a little bit of glue on the reverse there and then you've got a belly band style closure got a bit of fluff there you've got a belly band style closure on your little folio if you wanted to use that so this doesn't go to waste if that's what you want to want to do okay so we've cut our piece of vellum so that it measures uh, 27 centimeters across so what I've done now is I've put my um, piece of vellum on my scoreboard and I've just scored it at nine centimeters and also 18 centimeters. Now, if you remember, I said that my tag was eight centimeters wide. So this center portion here gives me plenty of room to put my tag on and have five millimeters on either side as my wiggle room. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my piece of vellum and I'm just reversing it and I'm going to score at four uh, centimetres. So I'm just going to go along the bottom like that. Take this away. Is I'm just bending up that score mark. And if you want to use a bone folder, please go ahead and use a bone folder. I'm being a little bit careful here with this being vellum not to overstress it too much and I don't really want too much of a tight crease on this portion here but I do want one along this edge here and this edge here and what you want to do now is you want to just cut away this portion here and this portion here and this is where I like to come in and use my metal ruler and my exacto knife so I'm just going to do that very quickly Okay, now fold up your bottom bit and as you can see, you've now got your pocket. So now what you want to do is you want to fold these creases. Now I suggest what you do is you line up your top edge here, not your pocket, pocket edge, but you line up your top edge and just very gently crease it along the um, crease mark that you've made using your scoreboard and if you have cut this pocket slightly shallow along your score line down here you will find that you'll get no overlap here and you should be able to have an absolutely nice crease and fold and then do exactly the same on the other side and gently let that crease fall into place. Now the reason I say do it this way round is because you then have this pocket in place 
and you can make sure that everything is going to sit nicely when you do these two folds on either side like so okay now if you wanted to you could leave your little pocket or your folio like this and then go in with your belly band round it like so or you could put an eyelet on this side and wrap your um, sari silk round you could even make your closure the other way round I'm stating all the obvious but those are options that you can you can do okay so now what I do is I fold this piece in half so both in fact I'm going to do it on both to both of these flaps here I'm going to do the original design so I'm just going to close that one up and I'm going to hold it in place and I'm going to angle this at roughly 90 degrees and I'm going to take my piece of vellum and I'm just going to put it into that fold and again I'm lining up this top edge not the pocket edge so that's in the the fold I'm just going to sandwich it with my two fingers come out to the center here and it's moved slightly come out to the center and make a fold like so so when I open that up, fold that across, it should sit nicely. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, leaving that in place. And then when you close up your pocket or your folio, you should have a nice, perfect crease where they meet nicely. So now all you need to do is I'm just going to open out my little folio. I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of art glitter glue along both those edges. I'm going to open that out and close that up and just hold it for a second or two. Okay, so that's our pocket done. So I've opened out my flap and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little a slither of glue along the top and the bottom now if you're doing this in paper or cardstock you can use more glue than I'm actually using here um, I'm using enough art glitter glue to hold my vellum in place um, but I'm also using the least that I can get away with for the simple reason that I don't want it to show on my project and through my vellum. Um, you can use a little bit more glue if you want to, as I say, if you're using um, cardstock or paper. And there's nothing at all to stop you sewing um, around your folio if that's what you wanted to, to do. So as you saw there, I've just done the other flap on the other side. And there we have it, all nicely glued and ready for our eyelet. Now, the other thing that um, I would mention to you, if you wanted to, you could put a bead of glue along this edge here and close up that flap if you wanted to. I quite like leaving it open because you could put something in there if you wanted to, and obviously you've got the same on the other side. Um, if you wanted to make it a... a um, uh, a proper tuck spot there's nothing to stop you going in with one of these circle punches and doing a thumb notch there and there's also nothing to stop you actually just cutting down that flap so that it's it's more noticeable as a tuck spot but for mine I'm just leaving them exactly as they are as I say very very simple now I made my closure using two eyelets and I just eyeball roughly where the centre is along um, my flaps and I just go about five centimetres in on either side and do a little dot. Then I grab my cropper dial and using the bigger hole because I'm putting in four millimetre eyelets here. I just centre up that dot, punch out a circle, or punch out a hole, and 
grab an eyelet. My eyelets come with washers for the back, so I quite like using those. I've just chosen a couple of gunmetal eyelets. And there we have our little folio. Now, I've done a previous video and I'll put the link in the description box down below showing how I've decorated my vellum um, folios for my tags um, so that you can see what they look like when they're decorated. If you're using a digital page that might already be decorated for you, if you're using a book page or just plain cardstock, then you just go ahead now and um, collage or paint or decorate these however you, you want. In terms of the closure, um, what I quite like to do on mine is I quite like to thread my sari silk from the inside through to the outside of my closures like so and then I, <laughs> you can either take them and wrap them around like this but what I quite like to do is take the left hand piece of sari silk and if I put that up take it round over to the right hand side and round to the back and the left hand piece of sari silk sorry the right hand piece of sari silk take that over to the left and wrap that round on the back and if I flip it over you will see it looks like that so you can overlay it if you want to um, but I quite like that look on the front and then I just bring it round to the front and tie my bow but I'm not going to do that now because I need to pop my tag back inside that but that's basically how I make these and of course you don't have to use sari silk you can use baker's twine you can use pieces of material you can use avil art yarn all sorts the world's your oyster so a nice little very very easy folio for putting tags in and other bits and bobs next thing are these little pockets that I made for the acetate tags and these are even simpler than that last little folio really really easy and again you can make them to whatever size you want um, I've made mine quite generous here um, because I wasn't sure if I was going to pop something else in with these tags and as you can see I haven't decorated mine um, other than put a, a couple of little stickers on the back but you can decorate these however you want and again you can make them out of whatever you want um, I would say though that if you are making them out of um, vellum that you go for the lighter weight vellums um, less than 155 gsm if you've got tracing paper and that sort of weight these are ideal to be made in the lighter weight and actually it was perfect for my little project here because i bought some um, very very lightweight vellum by mistake and it was a good way to use it up but as i say you don't need to use vellum you could use paper you could use cardstock but i think you might find that that is going to be too chunky and too um, cumbersome to work with so you're looking for the lighter weight um, papers to be making these pockets out of so that's what the pocket looks like when it's open and you don't have to glue the back you don't have to put stickers this one is a reject of mine because I managed to get a crease um, in it so I'm just using this one as a template but as I say you don't actually need to put any stickers or any glue on the back to hold these in place they will stay as you fold them um, but I just chose to do that with mine you can also do a slight variation on these so I've got a couple here as you can see you can make these in whatever size you want so I've made a couple of little ones here and that's the basic pocket it's exactly the same if I flip it over that's what it looks like on the back um, and then this one yeah I've put a little dab of glue on the back there but the idea with these is if you reverse the fold so if you take each edge and just gently 
push them over. Then what you can do is you could put an eyelet or a hole and a piece of string through there and you would have a little gift box or something like that. And these again are little ori origami, origami? origami um, little um, gift boxes. So this is another one I've made. This one I haven't glued it there and it will still hold. Just fold it against the crease like so and... If you put a little eyelet or you could even just put a dab of glue if you wanted to along the inside to hold it in place or if I just grab one here a little paper clip um, this one's a bit big for this but if you had one of the little Tim Holtz ones they would work equally as well and I could do that with this one as well I could just reverse that fold and push it across there and I'd still get the triangle. I just have to manipulate this one a little bit. So that's just a suggestion if you wanted to use them as little gift boxes they work really well for that. So let me show you how these are made and again super easy. You can make them as I say in any size you want. I'm choosing to make mine um, using again a sheet of A4 vellum because I want to create one roughly around this size. So the first thing you do is you turn it so that you've got the short edge facing towards you and what we're going to be doing now is we are going to be creating this fold here along the top. So you need to decide how deep you want your top to be. Now on this one I've gone for, where are we? I've gone for three centimetres on this one I've gone for two centimetres and it's more um, really what is going to be in keeping with the size that you're going to be working with so I'm bringing in my scoreboard again I'm just going to take away that piece and I'm probably I think with mine this time around I'm going to work with um, just over half an inch so I'm just scoring along that short edge you don't have to use a scoreboard that's just my my preference and I've made my score so now I'm just going to fold along it and again you could use a bone folder but I'm just going to work with my fingers so there we go so there's your fold along one of the short edges now this piece with the fold towards you now becomes the outside obviously of your pocket. So what you want to do now is you want to reverse it so that that fold and that little flap you've just created is underneath and you want to fold this into three now and what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have an overlap now not too much about that much <laughs> and I'm just going to measure that for you that is if I can turn that around the right way whoops a daisy that is about two centimeters so you want roughly a two centimeter overlap so I'm just going to pop that down on my table here and I'm just going to make a crease down my piece of paper on one side and again you can measure this all out perfectly if that's what you want to do but um, I'm not going to do that I'm just going to make sure that everything is lined up like so and then I'm just going to crease down there like so okay so this is where I say it's super easy. What you do now is because you've had your flap underneath, when you folded these pieces over, your flap is now on the top. And all you do is just fold one piece underneath the other piece, like so, at the top. So let me show you again. You folded your piece of paper, your flap is on the reverse. You folded your piece of paper so that there is a two centimeter, roughly a two centimeter overlap and then you just take this edge here 
and slide it under this edge here like so and because you've got your creases nicely in place that will sit there really nicely for you okay just going to give that a good burnish and now all you do is with that flap along the top you just take your bottom and I'm just holding everything in place with my hand because as I say nothing is glued and I'm just folding up that bottom edge and I'm sliding it underneath the flap at the top as well so I'm just lining it up and gently maneuvering it underneath the flap at the top and just get my ruler I should have my bone folder out but I'm just making sure and I'm just sliding it up to the top edge here as far as I can get it trying to keep everything nice and square and it does take a little bit of fiddling because it is a tight fit but it will go just push it up as high as you can get the joy of working with vellum is you can actually see when it is the bottom edge is right up to the inside here so once it's there again just holding things in place so that they don't move and I am going to get my bone folder out here I'm just going to make sure that everything is nicely folded And there you have your little pocket simple as that it really is now if you find that you haven't got quite a neat edge there because sometimes it can move and I've got probably about a millimeter of overhang if that on this top piece where the other side is tucked under you can trim it with your scissors if you want um, but I, I'm more than happy with that I'm not bothered about it at all now this will hold rigidly <laughs> it's perfect you don't have to worry about it um, you could glue that into your journal by gluing the back portion there if you wanted to and you could glue that in and have it as a pocket and use these portions here as a tuck spot if you wanted to and you've got one on both sides there we go you've got one on this side as well and it goes all the way through so you could use it for a, a card going all the way through if you wanted to um, you could um, use it as a tuck spot underneath here if that's what you wanted to by creating a bigger flip or, or bigger flap there so there's endless options that you can do with this if you turned it over you could do it use it as a secret writing spot and actually pull that flap out that we've just tucked underneath here and use that as a secret writing spot so there's loads of options that you can use with this or as I've done you can just use it as a simple um, pocket for a tag or something like that now as I say you don't need to glue this or you don't need to glue any of it it will all hold quite nicely but if you want to you can do or if you want to do what I did here you could put a little couple of stickers on there um, or collage over it so again <laughs> really really simple and easy um, pocket there and the joy is you can use it as a little bit of packaging if you want to or you can make them whatever size you want okay so on with the last one now the last one to put these out of the way the last one I want to show you is and this one's coming apart is this little origami envelope now this couldn't be more simple it really couldn't um, and again you have one or two options that you can use um, this this for um, you can 
use it as it is without this bit by simply tucking this bit behind like that so you can use it got a piece of fluff there you could use it as a tuck spot in your journal if you wanted to like so as a tuck spot there and as a tuck spot here you don't have to use this little corner tab there what you could do and this has been shown on oodles and oodles of videos you can tuck one of the corners inside the other one to create another little pocket there and then again in your journal you can have it so that it opens out as a secret writing spot in your journal so again loads of options with with this little one I quite like using it as an envelope and that's what I used mine for um, when I was creating my creation boxes because as I say I wanted to use it for putting in a business card and also for writing a little note to my customers so that goes in there like so and that tucks down in there so again loads of little options and doesn't it look different if you do it in some colored paper i wanted to do mine in parchment so that it matched the um in my decoration for the creation boxes but i think it looks absolutely lovely if you just do it in origami paper and works equally as well you could use a book page for this and it's again such an easy project so let me show you how I've created these for my piece of paper I need a square and again you can make these any size that you want depending on the size of the square of paper that you start with um, I've gone here for 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters and the reason I did that was because I wanted to make sure that my business cards would fit in neatly inside the little envelopes so the first thing you do is you take your opposite corners and match them up perfectly put a finger and go out to the center like so and then you reverse it and do the same on the other side go out to the center okay so what you have now is you have your mountain fold on one side your valley, valley fold on the other side and two diagonal lines now take one of your points and go into the center increase that and do the same on the other side and I've not lined that up very well but it doesn't matter and you do that on this side lift out one of your flaps like so this one is still in um, the center of your piece of paper and just fold it up like so so that you've created a triangle and it looks like that okay really really easy so now what you want to do I'm just lining mine up on the board here um, what you want to do now is you want to take this point and you want to go past if you draw a line imaginary line from this point down to the bottom here you want to take this point past it by at least a centimeter maybe a centimeter and a half okay so I'm just going to do that now so I'm taking that across like so and I'm creating a crease down this edge here and I've lined it up along the bottom here and you want to do the same with this corner here so you want to take that and go past that center point by about a centimeter and a half and do your crease like so and then just fold the top portion back down again now you've already got your crease from along the top 
so it would it should sit quite nicely as you fold that over okay so if you now want to create this little piece down here to tuck your flap into like so then what you need to do is you need to take your top portion here you want to pinch it at the center point where your point is going to come down so if you push this down here then just put your finger where that point meets at the bottom then what you want to do is you want to take this flap and just bend it back from that point so if I bend that down you can see it looks like so okay so let me do that again so I've looked to see where this point comes down and I put my finger on it and then all I did was bend that back along the bottom to create that fold like so okay you now open it up so that it's standing upright and if you just get your bone folder or your finger you can put your finger in that little piece so there it is stood up like so just put your finger inside whilst it's stood up and gently push this point up towards here and what you're doing is you're lining up with this point in here and you will have a crease line up there that you will be able to see and all you're doing is lining that up I'm just going to pop mine down so that I can get the fold nice and accurate and you're creasing it up towards you like so okay so it looks like that I just hold that out again and that's what it looks like and then your flap will come down and into that and if you burnish your edges it should sit nicely for you okay everybody there we go another nice and easy project for you i hope you enjoyed seeing all three of those little um items i made and um, i'll see you in the next video take care everybody bye bye now